This is just a baby. Uh. I am six years old and I do drag. Asa is a baby drag queen. He performs at drag shows as Lulu Lovely Twirls. Lulu Lovely Twirls. Lulu Lovely Twirls! He started doing this four, five, now six years old. He is by far the youngest performer we've seen. There's even adult performers that sometimes we can outperform. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the next RuPaul. At first, I was terrified. You never really know what people's reactions are gonna be. What do you think the biggest misconception of Asa and what he's doing is? Well, I think there's a few. People who don't like what we believe can sometimes be violent. People want to cause harm to our family, like legit harm. We're getting death threats. Horrible things being said. That there was a child stripping. And dancing provocatively. provocatively. Calling us groomers, pedophiles. Child Protective Services was called on us. And then the anti-drag bill. This is an activity that is exploiting children. We had a child that would be directly affected by this law. Asa whispered in my ear, can I testify? I still wasn't sure where I was at with him performing drag at that point. I said, are you sure you want to speak? It's like he was born to do this. Let's be super nuanced since everyone on the internet takes this subject matter and freaks out because they're all sensitive about their feelings. Miss Fishy, I'm gonna use your comment to have a conversation because I think that's what stood out to me the most. He was born to do this, barf, let your child be a child. I actually do think people are born to do things. And I do think he probably was born to do it. It seems to come really natural. It's within his body movements. A no normal 16 year, six year old is going to be doing this. So the fact that he is doing it, I would argue is why he's born to do it because he's exhibiting behavior so young and pretty naturally within his personality. So I would say he was born to do it. The question is, does that matter in terms of him doing it now and in public and online and with the particular audiences? And does it make sense to make him a public figure? So I think think the way that I would handle this is probably universally how I'd handle any child in performance and it's not to do it. I do think that children being exploited is way too high and to harm reduce. I wouldn't exploit my child on the internet or, you know, even on stage necessarily. I don't think I'd put them in industries where they're more likely to end up having an eating disorder or mental health issues. And so I think for me, I would say my child could desire to do drag and they can do it at home and they could do it in the safety of a home that's not going to exploit them but I do think parents that put their children in the spotlight parents do who do put their kids on stage parents who do use their child for money I think that's all a red flag so anything from vlogging channels to even Trisha Paytas who I love I do give her a side eye that she puts her babies on the internet and makes her babies content even though I think Trisha is well-intentioned, I wouldn't be able to do that myself. And so again, it's like, where's the line? Do I think Trisha is doing the same thing that this family's doing? No. Do I want to put ill intention on this family more than Trisha? I don't think I can. I don't know if that's true. You know, and I use Trisha as an example because we all like Trisha here. Like a lot of us like Trisha here, not all, but a lot of us like Trisha here. And even though we like her, I'm still a little annoyed that her child is being given names that are outrageous and I think that's clickbaity that her children are used as props that I do think she loves her children but I do think she sensationalizes her children already naming your kid Malibu and naming your kid Elvis you know it's it's certainly not in the kid's favor right? It's certainly not for the kid, right? It's not in the kid's favor. You know, ostracizing your kid and making them stand out in school on purpose before they've even had a chance to form their own identity, you know? So I don't know. I, I look at this and I think I'm not going to assume the worst intent, but I'm certainly not going to assume the best intent. But then again, what about parents who put their kids in um like monastery-like settings and make their kids do work you know, with priests or monks or make them suffer under physical strain. Like, I'm not a fan of that either. Or what about kids who, or parents who put their kids in sports and make them work every day after school to be in sports? Like, I'm not a fan of it. Honestly, 
all those gymnasts that we love, all those people we love, I would have rather those kids never become amazing athletes than become athletes with a lot of emotional baggage. So there's something to be said about that too. I don't want to encourage my kid, if I have one, to be like an amazing athlete. I think about David Beckham's story and how, you know, he's grateful in a lot of ways, but it wasn't like perfect the way he was raised and he was definitely talked to by his dad in not the greatest ways. And he absolutely was treated as like, it, it, it paid off. It paid off to play football. But David was also doing it on his own. But I would say the the path to get there is something that I probably wouldn't do as a parent. But maybe it's the reason that David succeeded, David Beckham. So it, again, it's like, well, what does it mean? For me, I don't value any of these things. I don't think any of them are important. But for the kid, maybe it's their whole life. So what's the difference from drag? And putting your kids in sports and people would say the sexualization, but drag can be very neutral. I don't think drag is always sexual. So what does that mean? You know what I mean? And again, what, who is he performing for? What's the vibe? Who's the community? You know what I mean? I just think so many questions go into this and I'm open to it being a little bit more nuanced, you know? Glitchin says, I know you want to find the nuance and everything, but this is so fucking wild. I mean... I think there is nuance in everything, right? It's just like, what category are we looking at? Hello says all a money grab. I do think in this instance, it definitely feels like one, but I also think it's a money grab for every YouTuber that puts their baby on the internet. I think putting your baby on the internet is nothing but a money grab, um, even when you're just naturally sharing your baby. Like, I just think it's a part of the money grab. Like, I ultimately, why does your baby ever need to be on the internet? Like, why does your baby's image ever need to be there? You know, and it's maybe it's because you're working and you want to work and film. I could understand that. I could see the nuance of that. In this instance, it's not quite that, right? He is the star, you know, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan. But even if you put your kids in ballet, chances are they'll have an eating disorder and body issues and they're going to grow up feeling very insecure. So where's the line is the question. If you put kids in religious class, they might feel ostracized because they're gay. It's like. What's the line? And I think the line is about the individual harm reduction of the individual child. So let's try to be more nuanced and ask ourselves, does this child get to be an exception? And is it more harm to take this away for them? Or is it harm? Is it more harm to let them do it? <laughs> Nebraska. Lisa, can we put a little mic on here? Tell us, what are we about to see? A tour of my room. I made this at somebody's birthday party. It's a popsicle. Nice. It's saying my name. I think I... 11. Her nickname is Drag Bear. And it looks like she has makeup on. Here's my Barbie house. Here's Townsville. What's Townsville from? Pal are we just watching a gay kid be gay or a trans kid be trans? Like, what are we watching here? Is this a drag queen? Like, what are we watching here? This is very gender not conforming. This is very, like, femme. This is a very feminine boy. Like, are we watching, like, a trans kid be trans? Like, what are we watching here? This is, like, very interesting. If my kid was exhibiting this behavior, I would wonder, like, what their future is going to be. Oh, Puff Girls. The mayor's tower, which has the pride flag. Because, like, even if he was gay, there's, like, no male representation in this room. So is he trans? Is he a girl? Like, what's happening? Who made this for you? My dad. I would consider our family. I would want to know, like, who the audience is as well. Like, who's the audience for his shows? It would be a traditional family. Can sports. we go traditional? Traditional family. I look bad with that coat. Do you remember that picture? Was it be when I became the drag queen? They all do different sports. They all have their activities that they do. But we have a child that's interested in something that's maybe not as traditional. Asa refers to himself as a drag queen. He does it very proudly. He performs at drag shows as Lulu Lovely Twirls. He puts together and produces his own numbers for drag shows. That's a lot of work. That's what I'm saying. He was obviously born to do this. What do you like about drag? Getting to meet the drag queens and performing. Dancing, dancing, dancing. Do you want to practice? So far, the audiences have been adults, if you guys have noticed. So super red flag. But also in a very safe environment, 
that wouldn't be a red flag, but I don't trust these people. Yes. Asa, this is going to be the front. If I walk right here, I'm off the stage, right? Pretend this is where people are sitting. First, I find a song, and I'm like, oh, I could dance to this. I'm like, I'm going to do this at this part, that at that part, that at that part. I am in awe constantly with the fact that he can just maneuver and work the stage on a dime. It's something innate within yeah. him. Okay. Yo, he be doing the splits, bruh. I actually like holding the splits. All right, good job. You feel good about it? Anything no. else you're concerned about that you want to talk about? Okay, literally, Glitchin, you're not. You're making a joke, but the joke actually doesn't make sense because we're trying to be nuanced. You said, or you already know what some of his audience at his shows are. Yeah. Those same audiences exist in your churches and at your hospitals and in your schools. People who go to drag shows are not less are not more likely to be child predators. Child predators are doctors and teachers. They are where children are. Actually, you know who's less likely to be in, uh, in an audience is a predator for adult audiences. One of Asa's favorite pastimes since he was a toddler was dancing. He would watch a lot of kids' bop videos. And then we noticed that he's trying to do the dances that they're doing in the music videos. I would say the real conversation about drag started the first time that he went to Pride with us. The first time that we took any of our kids to Pride, Asa was four. We thought it would be a good way to bring our kids in and let them see the diversity of the world around us. Okay, okay. The music came on for the main stage. Asa was like, what's that music I want to know and grabbed me by the hand and there was a drag performance going on. He's just sat there kind of watching in awe. Okay, so note his parents introduced him to drag because I asked that earlier. Why does he know what a drag queen is? So they're pro-LGBT, so they introduced him to the community. I wonder if they're queer, right? They might be queer, right? So, okay, I kind of feel like if we're relating it to pageants, which Discord is doing, then I am also anti-pageants just for the record. So I'm consistent. I'm also anti-pageants for kids. So I would be anti-drag for qu kids in public, I think. Again, any activity that makes the child the focus of an adult's attention, I don't love it. I also think, like, parents aren't good at protecting their kids, as we've seen. So if these parents are really, really, really good at it, that's different. But, yeah, he seems to naturally – I'm going to say that I'm, I agree with them that he was born to do this. He seems – very naturally inclined to do this. I've seen this in some children, so I think that's a vibe. How old is he? He's currently six. He's currently six. So, okay. And he turned to me and said, could I do that? I was still kind of new to the concept of the LGBTQ community. I'd never really been exposed, so I'd never been around it. Oh, I kinda... so the dad is saying he's not queer. Grew up where everybody would say, oh, that's gay, that's gay, referring to something they didn't like. For me, it was, at that point, still pretty uncomfortable to think about, talk about. I'm all about our family being allies, but it never occurred to me that we'd be a part of that community at this point in our lives. Following that, for the next year, Asa was just obsessed with drag. And so the conversations led to, would Asa ever want to wear a dress? The first dress he owned would have been the Barbie nightgown. He said to me one day, I am going to go put on my dress and I am going to sing and you're going to video me and put me on Facebook so everybody can give me likes. Uh, Starvo says the boy could have been the next uh, Bursch. I don't know how to say that name. If they enrolled him in dancing classes, but they made him do this instead. It's the same to me. I think putting your kid in dance is just equal to this. I'm saying don't put your kid in dance. I'm an extremist. Don't put your kid in sports or dance or anything like that. Unless you do it in a way that doesn't make them the center of attention. But you can't because what if they go on to be great athletes, which I think they shouldn't. But like then maybe they should. That's what I'm saying. I don't think this is different than making him the next great ballet dancer or the next great Russian whatever or the next great whatever. It's not different to me. You know what I mean? Like kids don't know what they want. Total disagree. I disagree with this premise that kids don't know what they want. Lots of kids know what they want. Lots of us knew what we wanted at a very young age, and it just takes years to find it to be true. I think not all kids know what they want, just like not all adults know what they want. Some kids know what they want. I'm kind of on this kid's side. I just still wouldn't put him in public. I would let him do drag at home, though. 
and I would let him do drag for very safe family and friends. Um, yeah, but I, I do think some of us are born to know what we, we want to do. I think some of us know what we want to do. You know, I just don't think most people do. But I think when you're unique in that way or in that category, you do. You know what I mean? So, mm, yeah, I'm kind of on the kid's side right now, but I'm not a fan of making him a public figure. You know? And I said, okay. <laughs> and that's the video that really kind of spurred this journey then because I shared that. I think he is inclined to dancing. They showed home videos of him. And then they taught him how to dance, which would make sense. If my kid was interested in that, I would teach him how to do it more. You know what I mean? Video, And that's how we got invited to the first brunch. That just led us to subsequent invitations. After that first time, he fell in love with it. There's no turning back. Mm -hmm. Now we almost have one performance a month that Lulu gets to do. My drag name is Lulu Lovely Twirls. When okay, it's like a cute name, it's innocent, okay. We were in the car, we were trying to think of a name. I said Twirls, Mom said Lulu, and then I said Lulu Lovely Twirls. He's very much like a performer. Kids like this are very special. The problem is, is kids like this also get taken advantage of, and that's my worry. But he is a very unique kid. He fits into a very performance category of kid, right? Like, I do think this is his authentic experience. Is there any difference between Asa and Lulu Lovely Twirls? No. They're pretty much the same person. Would you consider yourself a boy or a girl or what right now? Boy. Do you like being a boy all the time or some of the time? Some of the time. What about when you're Lulu? What are your pronouns? She and they. Okay, so he's more, okay, well, first of all, that's a unique language right there. So obviously he's growing up in a progressive home with progressive options. I don't think it's much different than a kid saying they talk to God or have a gardening angel. Like, they're having an experience that feels real. Like, I remember my parents would say to me, I feel like you were smarter when you were 10 because at 10, I was like a practicing Catholic. Like, adult people with actual functionality within the world think their kids are literally smarter because their kids agree with them. So obviously, this is a progressive household. Obviously, they're learning progressive words. I don't think any of this is bad. I don't think him being gender fluid or experiencing that relationship with gender fluidity is bad. I don't think any of that is predatory. Um, obviously, he's fine. So, okay, the only part of it so far, I think, is putting him online maybe. But then also doing drag shows is kind of weird because like, but then your kid's working and I don't know if I'm a fan of that. But also, I don't think there's some there's like there's a lot of nuance here. Because remember, I don't know if you guys pay attention to what people let their kids do around the world. Okay? But this is not that different. It just looks different because it's not a part of your culture. Do you want to give them a tour of your closet? Yes. This is where all of my dresses go. Wigs, stuff to get ready. His very first ever one was this one when he was like, nope, I want to do it again, and drag's going to be a thing. That's when I started getting the costumes. These are the fish types that I'm wearing. What do we have up here? My wiggies. Yep, all your little wiggies for all your different outfits. The wigs in general are for adults. We generally, when we have those needs, Conrad, you said bad things happen anywhere, so I think keeping them away from the public or making them public doesn't change all that much. You're saying there's no difference between putting your child on the internet and never posting your child on the internet? You can't really mean that, right? Do you mean your child getting exposed and surrounded by adults who have now access to him at a higher level is statistically not going to make that much of a difference? Kids who have never been on social media, never away from their parents, you're saying that doesn't make much of a difference? Like, I feel like you can't mean that literally. I Maybe you've never had a kid in the spotlight or known somebody in Hollywood or something, but like, obviously there's a difference between putting your kid online and not. Even the studies are showing right now. There's a huge difference. And did you hear what he said earlier? I didn't look good in that coat. He's already having issues with how he looks based off of like, again, he would have had it at home anyways, but the conversations can be different when it's not in public, right? So I don't think you mean literally not a difference. There's a huge difference. Data shows that. So that's why a lot of people are, are about, like not putting their kids on the internet because 
there seems to be a huge difference, you know, between parents who do put their kids on the internet in this particular way. So yeah, I'm not really a big fan of putting him in public. I think I'm going to be pretty strong about that stance. Um, fishnets on kids. Um, little sus. Yeah. Fishnets on kids in public. People taking pictures of your kids. People using that. I just, yeah, I just, there's a lot of grown up activity that happens with certain hobbies. Look, I don't know about you. It's different. Okay, look, one time I was hanging out at Farm Brothers house and his neighbors um, put their girls in dance class. And the little girl, like she was probably like, um, how old must she have been? I don't know. 10, 11, 10. She could do the splits. And she was wearing like a normal shorts and a t-shirt. But she did the splits like right in front of me and my farm brother and kind of exposed her a little bit, like her underwear. And I was like, whoa, put down your legs. And it was one of those things where my brother had to tell them like, hey, your girls, I know they're in like dance class and everything, but they're like inappropriately displaying their bodies. And if it's done around the wrong person, you know, it kind of just the numbers, you know, it's just like just the energy It's, it's signaling. It's not even that people won't be a, a, that you can't be a victim if you never do things like modest people become. It's not about that. It's about the signaling. It's about the inappropriateness. Like <laughs> you're a child. I don't want to see you in this particular position, in this particular way, in this particular like we're just it feels weird, but also it comes from a lot of trauma. This is a trauma response in a lot of ways because we're trying to break generational curses and there's a lot of sexual predatoriness in my extended family and there's a lot of issues. And so from neighbors to friends to family, like we're just very concerned about kids because we know it's very difficult, especially when you know your friends and family are probably going to be the ones to do it because that's what statistics show. It's very scary trying to figure out like, who is the person I can leave my kid alone with? Who is it? And it's, it, you know, so again, it might sound paranoid, but it's because of the trauma, right? It's like, well, how do we break these generational curses if we're not aware that it's, it's, it could have, like, I would rather my kid have a safe space to do it with people we trust than do it around like randos, you know? SB says comments on YouTube get turned off for kids videos because of the creepy comments. Literally, I watched this video the other day of a hairdresser with these kids that look like adult models and the comments were gross. The comments were gross. I feel like every person making a gross comment should just be like, gross. You know, and I do think it's a red flag. I think it's a, r- a green flag that my brother's like, hey, protect that kid versus the men. They're like, you're so pretty. Oh, I would love to date you when you get older. If my brother said that to a girl, I'd kill him. Like, not literally in a video game, but I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? You can't say that to children. You know, you can't say that to children. But then here are these men all up. Oh, I would date you when you get older. It's not cute. It's a red flag. Don't don't talk that way to children. And if you do, I'm sorry. I think you should be ostracized from the family. I think you should be banned. Okay, banned from the family. People are very comfortable with risking their children's safety. And it just feels very strange, you know? This is the absolute youngest that I've ever heard of or like anything like that before. So <laughs> at first I was terrified because we do live in the Midwest. You never really know what people's reactions are gonna be. But after working with Asa, getting to know Asa a little bit better, Asa was worth fighting for. Elvis says, I have a feeling that if that kid wanted to be Rambo or a soldier, his parents would have squashed that impulse real fast. I don't get that vibe. Do you guys get that vibe? I don't get that vibe from this family. What do you think? I mean, they're progressive, so they probably wouldn't want them to have a gun. And neither would I, by the way. My farm brother doesn't let his kids play with guns. You want to hear something interesting? They're pro- they're um, conservative. They're Trump voters. They're Republicans. They're pro-lifers. They're Catholic. Their kids aren't allowed to play with toy guns because they have real guns on the property. And if they play with toy guns, they can never point it at each other. So my farm brothers, like you can, if you buy my kid a gun, like a fake gun, he can never point it at his brother because they never want them to ever mistake a real gun for a toy and point it at their siblings. So if you buy, like in the family, we used to buy them guns because we're they're conservative and I thought that would be cute. 
But my brother didn't want the kids pointing the guns at each other because they never wanted an accidental accident. And you would think growing up in the conservative bubble, that would be a cute toy for them. But nope. So even my brother shut it down. And he's a farmer, bro. He got muscles and farm hands and a gun. He wears his gun 24-7. My brother owns a gun and wears it 24-7. He wears it to the, the store. He wears it everywhere. So isn't that interesting? Uh, not even airsoft. Well, I mean, the kids can't play with airsoft guns. Like, they're they're going to hurt each other and knock each other's eyes out. But when they get older, they can play with them. But the kids are really young right now. Like, the kids are babies right now. They're, like, nine and younger. But, yeah, they don't – he doesn't want them because they, they really do live in a world where, like, hey, there's guns everywhere. And you could accidentally kill each other with it. And we don't want to be the family that accidentally kills each other with a gun. So I think there's something to be said about whether this family would even want him to be Rambo. It's like, what do you mean? Wait, Ingrid said, who the fuck plays with guns? What? Everybody. What do you mean? Did you guys play Cowboys and Indians as a kid? Or was that my problematic 90s era? <laughs> in the 90s, and literally growing up in the 90s, we would wear headdresses and dress up as Cowboys and Indians and play Cowboys and Indians. <laughs> Woo! I grew up in a different bubble. My brothers played with softball guns, paintball guns, Nerf guns, BB guns. Yeah, I played with guns, of course. Um, and then my dad owned real guns, of course. We just never knew where they were because he's good at hiding them. Why is the green strap way longer than this strap? Is it still longer for you? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for telling me. You know, they always say never work with drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he noticed it. Do you, see, do you know what I mean? This kid just got it natural. This kid just has a natural. You know what I mean? He's just naturally attuned. I think that's very possible in a child. I've seen it, you know? It was a year after their first performance. I took him to go perform. It was an amazing performance. And then just a couple of days later. I opened up a link and it was a post from Libs of TikTok of Ace's performance that they had screen grabbed from somebody else. Libs of TikTok is conservative. And I just go, oh. Yeah, I know. I know this TikTok. Yeah, I know this. That's what I'm saying. As a parent, I wouldn't put my kid through this. I'm going to be real with you. I don't, my partner doesn't even want to be put through it. My partner is an adult man and would like to stay off the internet because he knows how toxic you bitches are. But they're putting their own kid on there. The sacrifice of my job is that I'm putting my, my consciousness out there for the toxicity of the internet. The reason I question their parenting is that you're willing to make your kid undergo this suffering. And for what reason? Why is it necessary? But I feel this way about almost every kind of kid that like has attention on them. So that's the red flag, right? When you expose yourself, that's why I say, why would normies ever be on the internet? I had my bubble pop the other day in the VC. I was asking my discord. I could never imagine being a normie who didn't want to make money off the internet and putting myself on the internet. And then I realized like, are normal people putting themselves on the internet without thinking about money? I would never be here unless I was making money. If I was looking for communities, I wouldn't show probably my face. or I wouldn't be a person to have the focus on me. I would be private-ish. You know what I mean? I couldn't even imagine it. So I assume they want money and fame. But apparently normies are just on the internet with your Instagrams. Like why would you have a public Instagram unless you're trying to make money? But apparently... That's what people want. And I couldn't ever imagine wanting the attentions of strangers without some sort of reward like money. Like I genuinely, like I, why would I do that? You know what I mean? So that's why I keep thinking this is about money, but it's about something. Like why would you put your kids through this? You know what I mean? I don't get it. SB says, do you think babies' temperament already shows a lot of their personality? Yes. I've worked with children as a professional nanny and I've raised children in my family or been alongside them. And that's not offensive to my bubble. My mom always says, like, you helped raise the kids. So when I say that, I know a lot of people, some people, like, get, like, weird when I say that. But, like, okay. I didn't literally raise them. I had parents. But, you know, um, their personalities were so clear as babies. Mine was. You could have guessed my whole life by knowing me as a baby. You know what I mean? Oh, fuck. Aaron, I don't know what we're going to do. By the time we had seen it, it hadn't even been up for 24 hours yet. It had 500,000 views. It eventually went viral. Comments on it were just crazy. There are plenty of people out there calling us groomers, pedophiles. Horrible things being said about us. Right. They were adding the governor, adding the FBI. We were getting death threats. 
Initially, we tried to be very secretive because we knew living where we live that there could be controversy. Let's go check on the chickens. Okay. Yes. There's two eggs. There's chicken eggs. We are smack dab in the middle of the United States in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah, I kind of do like that they're from Nebraska. That's kind of fun. It's chicken food, guys. Which is a red state, but being here in Omaha, we are the blue dot. <laughs> this is fun. Ow, he nicked me. We have to warn him that there might be people here that are saying mean things and just to ignore them. Do you ever get nervous about what people might say when you're dressed as Lulu? Yeah. Would you ever want to wear a dress to school? No. No? Why not? I just don't want it to. OK, don't make him. Let him live his life. My playhouse. My stage where I can, where we do skits. And it's good that he has boundaries about what he does and doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to wear a dress to school. Good. Don't make him. And we have. If they were making him do it, I'd be really upset. A queen story hours so we can perform on this. We have some neighbors that can easily see over our fence and that aren't necessarily supportive. Drag. And so we are concerned about anything nefarious they might try to do with being able to see into our yard, our minor child doing something he loves. This We're section. gonna put a big greenhouse here eventually, which will- Because I can't see over the fence. Yeah. Start from the playhouse okay. all the way. Right there, ready? If he was a girl doing these exact same things, no one would be saying. Right, nobody would be saying anything, but if my little girl wanted to drag, I would feel the same way. So I don't care that he's in girl clothes. I don't care he has girl, whatever. I don't, I don't even know what girl clothes means. I don't give a fuck. Like, I think it's weird that there's no men in his bedroom, like no male representation, but that's probably like, he could be trans, who knows? But I don't have a pro, I would have a problem if my girls wanted to be drag kings as well or whatever, you know? Anything, but because he's a boy, People want to cause harm to our family, like legit harm. Was that fun? Good. CPS was called on us. Child Protective, Child Protective Services. Services. Someone called and thought he should be taken away from us. Yeah, look, if you're going to take away this kid, you got to take away all the kids from our religious homes, too. Because we were letting him do drag. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Yeah, they came on his birthday. But at the same time, we we're like, you know, let them come because they're not going to find anything wrong. And that's when I finally got to the point where I'm like, if this is happening when we try to be covert about it, what's the point? I don't care about the threats. We're going to work with the police. We're going to make it safe. And we're going to do it anyway, because they can't keep doing this to us. We were like, we can't hide this anymore. We need to be out, and we need to really show support for the community as a whole because they've been so supportive of us and our family, trying to give us spaces to perform and keep inviting us back even though their shows keep getting canceled because we're involved with it. This past legislative session, LB 371 was introduced and it is the anti-drag bill. Looking to ban youth at drag shows, which would be like Drag Queen Story Hour. It's in the car. It was very loosely worded so that it could be anything. We had a child. It is interesting because if their kid was anyone else, this wouldn't have been their life, right? They have two other kids. But I do think the, the, the child probably allowed them to pop a lot of bubbles. And since they were open to it, it didn't matter. It was going to – they were open to it. So here we are. I don't sense any inherent evil from them. I really don't. I don't really – I don't really sense any malicious nature from the parents. They seem kind of fine. I mean, keeping in mind, right – that I've come from bubbles where I've seen religious parents talk about how, you know, a dead child is better than a gay child. So. That was performing that would be directly affected by this law too. We decided that we would go ahead and testify against the bill. They introduced the bill. The center required to explain the bill. Bring this bill after seeing a clip of two drag shows that took place in Nebraska. And as he's explaining it, I hear him reference a video that he saw on Libs of TikTok. And I look over and I'm like, that's us. Lies about my baby. There was a child at a brewery that was stripping. Removing clothing and dancing provocatively. provocatively. That is our kid. 
and the video just happens to be where he's doing his reveal and ripping the cape off. Now we know that we have to speak because it is directly addressing our family. On that day, it was just gonna be the two of us speaking. He did want to come and he did want to wear his fancy new dress that he had just gotten. Jen got her turn to speak. My son has a... If you're trying to make... Okay, politics. If you're trying to make a statement of this is somewhat normal, you wouldn't want to shock the people you're talking to. I wonder if I would have my kid... See, this is the problem with using your kids in politics is I wonder if I would tell my kid you can't wear a dress today. You have to look more like a boy, like in a more traditional sense. Because if this is a game of politics, then you got to be less threatening to the people that want to hate you. But see, that's the problem. That's why I don't want my kids involved in politics unless it's like life or death, right? So love for all things glitter, sparkle, and sap. Or maybe, maybe, maybe it worked. I don't know. Let's see. They are, they literally make his beautiful blue eyes light up. I got my turn to speak. We allow my youngest son to perform and dance. Asa yeah. turned to me and whispered in my ear, can I sit in the chair and speak too. And I said, yes, you can. We can do it, but you need to be. Is this a little adult in a body? Like, listen, his little kid brain. Kids are so efficient. My little nephew could do this. I think my nephew would be really anxious, but I think he could do this. He's very good at articulating for himself and advocating for himself. I think some kids are just very aware and very able. So I'm kind of, kind of shocked and impressed too. Let's see. 100% sure he's in a room full of people and pe talking to people that he's never met before. And he said, yeah. He's a performer, so he's got it. Yeah, I do want to speak, but can you sit next to me? And I said, that's not a problem. I'm sure they will allow that. I have no idea what he's going to say. I don't even know if he knew what he was going to say at that point. My name is Asa. I think drag is a, a good thing. It makes me happy and I really like it. And I really like dance to you pretending to sing. Just I knew that I had to give him some questions. He said, how does drag make you feel? He went to that mic and he said, how does it make you feel? Powerful, powerful. When he said powerful. <sighs> yeah, there's like a, I just know I've worked with so many children and children are so capable. Not all children, just like adults. No offense to all the adults in the world, but some of you are not capable as much as a six-year-old kid is. This six-year-old kid is more capable than most of the adults that I have met because most of the adults I have met are still asking themselves to today, what do I want? This kid is six years old and already knows. And it is something about that that I think is really powerful. I mean, he just has a vision for himself that's so clear and I think that's really impressive. I'm exaggerating a bit, obviously. Let me be hyperbolic right now. But like I'm... I'm kind of impressed with his, you know what I mean? His tenacity. He, there's something about him that's so impressive. If he was my kid, I think I couldn't take away drag from him. I think I'd feel that was so cruel. I, I'm still un not understanding why we're putting him on the internet. And I think the temptation is too strong for people. I get it. I always think if I have a baby and I need to breastfeed, I'd probably breastfeed during stream, but I'd probably have a blanket over us. I probably would show you my baby initially, but not when they became recognizable. I can understand the desire to have your kid in frame sometimes because you're you're so proud of them. You know what I mean? Like I understand all of these things, but I, I really do think like children deserve to be heard and children deserve to be respected. And yes, we will break our child's consent by putting them to bed on time and telling them to go to school and doing all these things. Um, but I think there's something here to be learned. So yeah, I would say the parents seem naive, but well-intentioned. The child seems fine and well-adjusted and good with boundaries. I still wouldn't put them on the internet, but I think I would find a way for my kid to be able to do drag in a safe way, but I wouldn't want him on the internet powerful to me that was like but that's a personal value so Whew, the weight of that word just hit me so hard because i still wasn't sure where i was at with performing drag at that point is it worth the fear that comes along with it and he says powerful and i'm like dude i'm here with you all the way now i am here with you and we are going to fight tooth and nail to let you do this because i want you to always i also do think he's exceptional so he is like a part of a category of many children but they're also probably not the majority. Just like I said, I, I don't think even most adults are as capable as this little kid is um, in terms of their knowing themselves. He's quite introspective, you know. Can we admit this? These kids just repeating what their parents told him. Um, like the kids who say they believe in God. No. 
I wasn't just repeating what my parents told me when I thought I believed in God. I thought I was having a real experience with God and angels and prayer. I don't think kids are just repeating what their parents tell them. I think kids are also having sometimes a real experience. My relationship with religion wasn't because my parents were telling me it was right. It was because I felt connected to this word they gave me to express a feeling I was experiencing, right? I have siblings I grew up with who never liked going to church, never understood the connection to God. They were raised in the same household as me. They never felt connected like I did. And they always asked me, why do you feel so connected to God? And I was like, I'm telling you, I'm feel, I'm experiencing something. And I felt it as a child. Now, what I was experiencing, I think, was more metaphysical slash could be explained uh, through science as well. But I, I don't think it was a Catholic thing. I think it was more of a metaphysics thing. But I do think I was having unique and real experiences, right? And so I don't think he's just parenting what his child, his parents told him. I think he's using the tools his parents gave him to express, express something that's really authentic to him, which is limited because they can only give him so many tools. So my parents gave me limited tools of religious speak to help me explain something I was experiencing, and when I got older, I realized, okay, it wasn't God I was experiencing. It was a phenomenon within my body and chemistry and biology, but still was real. You know, it just wasn't really God. It was just really this experience. And I think this kid is having a real experience. Please feel powerful. That should not be taken away from you. He says, is having the opportunity to perform Omaha's Heartland Pride. He says, the only youth performing this is the see this is the only youth performing so he's the first and there's many kids like this again I, I wouldn't put my kid on display but obviously I don't want kids taken away because they're doing drag so in some ways I'm grateful to this kid for for being able to do this because you know I think it is really shitty that conservative parents are trying to take kids away from families like this when we all have to suck it up that kids are born into families we're not really big fans of right and so that's the problem is like, look, you don't want your kids taken away because of your religion. I don't want kids taken away because of drag. Okay. So let's just all like agree to disagree. Okay. CHI Health Center. It's a big arena, 18,000 seats. All right, let's go pick up the stage. I think there's a few misconceptions that happen with Asa doing drag. I think that one of the biggest ones is that he's forced to do this. Whoa, look, there's even seats all the way up top. Never had a stage like this. I know. Really, it's just a passion of his, and it's the same thing we would do with any passion any of our children have. All right, shall we go back to the dressing room and get your face on? When all the big stars come and do their concerts here in Omaha, this is the stage they perform on, and we weren't planning on this at all. This was like a spur of the moment thing today. They said, there's a spot open. Do you guys want it? And we were like, yes, and jumped right over. So we're lucky. We are lucky. This is so that was kind of their choice to tell him about it and then their choice to let him perform. So again, lots of parents around America let their kids perform, let their kids do sports. So I don't think this is much different in the context that they are showing us. I think it's kind of the same. So I'm kind of, I'm more on board with the family uh, and the kid at this, this point. This is by far the biggest venue that Lulu's ever performed. But again, I also would encourage my kid to be a performer. So I don't like adults. I don't like, I don't like people in general. So I'd probably raise my kid antisocial like I am. So, which could be a disadvantage or an advantage. Like I'd socialize them at school and stuff with people their own age, but I wouldn't socialize them with adults very much except outside the family, I think probably. Yeah, if parents can let their kids do pageants. I think this is fine. Well, I just don't think parents should let their kids do pageants. And I think kid pageants should be illegal. <laughs> So that's the problem is I do think kid pageants are predatory by nature and I think it's incredibly bad for children and I think it doesn't help with harm reduction. So that's the problem. If we're going to compare it to pageants, then like, you know what I mean? But if conservative parents or parents are going to let their kids do pageants, then I guess we can do this. I just, I personally don't like either. How do you feel right now? You're about to go out on the biggest stage you've ever been on and right. falling asleep. We are just stunned by these kind of moments, and he doesn't seem to be phased. Lou is just like, I'm gonna go and have fun. It's like he was born to do this. <laughs> it's boring. Yeah, I agree. I do think he was obviously born to do it. He was born to perform, and drag is his particular form. I do think he was like born to do it. I think he'll probably do it for the rest of his life for sure.
that you know being born to do something doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it at that age and that's another question right i think like burlesque dancers are born to do it sometimes it doesn't mean they need to do burlesque as a child right asa oh. <laughs> it's almost time the other misconception is that it is something nefarious and dirty it really is no different than anything that happens at a dance recital. Daddy, this is green apple. apple flavored. Mm -hmm. I think I, that I agree with that. I don't think anything is differently happening at a dance recital than this. I also hate dance, so. People have a hard time understanding drag if they've never been around it. You want to shake it and see right, if it moves? It. There is indecent drag, but it doesn't happen in front of children. It's not like, surprise, there's kids in the front row now. I think you're next, so let's go. Mm. This kid's just having fun. It's genuine. It's pure joy. Scream and shake and let it all out. From you, lovely twirl. And does what he wants to do, which is to, to twirl, just to have fun and create his art. Is he the best performer out no, there? And, no, he's, he's, he has, he's still learning, he's still working, he's, he's gonna evolve, kid. he's a kid. We get told a lot from performers and people in the community Woo! that people do kind of see Lulu as hope of what's to come for the future in the community. The children are our future. If he would continue down this path in his life, there's always gonna be hate and hurt. Do you think he's on the spectrum or is that just me thinking everyone's neurodivergent? He does, maybe he's a little neurodivergent. Maybe this is his special interest. Whether it started now or later, what we're doing now is teaching him to stand in his own light and know that he's loved and supported unconditionally and hope that that gives him the foundation to overcome the hate. People will ask us, what if at some point he's done and over with all this? People have been like, and then what? Hello, princess. You yeah, I'm also impressed with his ability to be on stage. Girl, I'm sweating just thinking about it. This man a performer. This man a performer. Set him up to have this haunt him. That's what I mean. Not anybody could do that. You gotta be born to do this, I'm telling you. The rest of his life, we've talked about it. And at the end of the day, we've raised a good ally. And he's done nothing wrong. How would you feel if we told you that you couldn't be Lulu anymore? Mad. Well, sad and mad because I really like drag and they don't want to stop. It's just about living in the moment and what's exciting for right now. And I think wherever that takes us is where we go. Yeah, I think um, I'm on, I agree with the family. Fuck, I don't like necessarily the internet presence and i'm not a big fan so uh, my bias my opinion my preference is not to have kids be performers um but i also know that's like so unfair but i also just hate everything that comes with it and i just feel like mm, but i get it because for a lot of things like ballet you got to start your kids really really young i just think it comes with so many negatives but i also think like but who your parents are really set in stone the possibilities of evoking your strengths. I do wonder if my parents were different, if any of their kids would have been different. And the answer is yes. I do think if they had encouraged certain things in certain ones of us, we would have been different kinds of people, but they didn't. And so I think that's a part of it. I look at my friends and what their parents allowed them to pursue. And I know that if her parents had been or their parents had been anyone different, they wouldn't have done those things and they would have been different people in a lot of ways, right? Because like I said, for some things, you got to put your kids in really early. And so for certain things, your parents do kind of dictate a lot of your future. And at the same time, um, you know, uh, it is what it is. You know, like I, I think there's a lot of harm reduction that could happen here. I would personally put my kid on the internet, but I, if I, this was my child, I would work really hard to get them into drag safe environments so they could perform to their heart's content, you know? Yeah, I'm 
sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.